today we're gonna to be talking about the Alexis Sharkey case. This one hits home because it's from my hometown, Houston, Texas. Alexis Sharkey, formerly known as Alexis Robinault, was born in January 25th of 1994. Not only was Alexis Sharkey beautiful, but she was also extremely smart. She grew up in Northwest Pennsylvania. After graduating high school in 2012, she attended the University of Pennsylvania. She went on to study psychology, biology, and nutrition, and also ended up graduating amongst the top of her class in 2016. After graduating college, Alexis decided she wanted to take some time to herself and explore and travel, so she decided to move to Odessa, Texas, where she would end up working at the local Twin Peaks. And this is where she met a regular whose name was Tom Sharkey. So a little bit about Tom Sharkey. He is in his mid forties. He was an oil field consultant. He was divorced with two kids. And like I said, he was a regular in Twin Peaks and that's how these two met and they ended up hitting it off pretty fast. Like for part two, so you can get to know more about the case. Part two of the unsolved case of Alexis Sharkey. Now while working as a waitress at Twin Peaks, she still had a bigger drive for money and wanted to get the hustle on. And she ended up finding a company called Monet. And if you know anything about Monet, they're basically all about hair care and stuff. And it's this whole pyramid thing. And most people know them as a scam, but this girl over here, she made it. Within a month, she was able to quit her waitressing job and she made it up to executive director of Monet. Because she was involved with Monet, she was very present in the social media world and was able to grow her Instagram following up to 20,000 followers. Because of this, she always worked from her phone and you would never see a day go by where she wasn't attached to her phone. In the summer of 2019, Tom and Alexis Sharkey became engaged and they would end up getting married later that year right before moving to Houston, Texas. Right after moving to Texas, she signed up for BFF Bumble and this is where she met her tight group of friends. Right after she moved to Texas, this is where she met her really tight group of friends and she was always in contact with them whether it was through group chat, in person, or through phone call. Like for part three. Part three of the Alexis Sharkey case. In early November of 2020, Alexis and her girlfriend would end up taking a quick road trip to Marfa, Texas, to which Tom was not present for. After her trip to Marfa, Texas, she decided to plan another trip to Tulum, in which again, Tom was not present for. After Tulum, she decided to call her mother and tell her that she would not be coming to Thanksgiving dinner at home, and she decided to contact her friend Tanya instead and go there for Thanksgiving, to which again, Tom was not there. Now, given the circumstances, I think it's safe to say that their relationship wasn't doing so well, given the fact that if you're a newlywed couple, you should be spending a lot more time together, especially during the holidays or traveling. After Thanksgiving at her friend Tanya's house, a man named Sebastian, who was a friend of hers that she met in Tulum, ended up picking her up later that night. After Sebastian picked her up, they went out to have a few drinks, and she ended up staying up till around 3 o'clock in the morning. After she was done hanging out with Sebastian, she ended up calling her friend Tanya that she spent the whole holiday with and told her she would be coming back to pick up her vehicle from her house. Like for part Part four of the Alexa Sharkey case. Now, after picking up her vehicle from her friend Tanya's home, she decided to get back to her home and the next day would be Black Friday. Now, as we all know, Black Friday is one of the biggest day for sales, especially if you're in the marketing world. All of her coworkers in Monet got an early start on the Black Friday sales and they were posting all over social media. Now, typically Alexis is extremely active on her phone, but this particular day, she was nowhere to be found. And it wasn't until 5.30 p.m. that her friends even heard from her. She sent her friends a group chat asking what they were all doing, but sadly, this would be the last time anyone heard from her. The next morning, one of her really good friend, Tanya, ended up texting the group chat and asking who was all coming over for a movie night that night. And typically, Alexis would be the first one to answer the text. No one ended up hearing from her, so all the girlfriends got together and tried to figure her out when the last time they were speaking to Alexis was, and everyone said that the last time they spoke to her was around 6 p.m. Friday the night before. Unfortunately, the last person to see her alive was Tom, and his story kept changing. Like for part five. Part five of the Alexis Sharkey case. Now at this point, Alexis is officially missing and the last person who have seen her was her husband, Tom Sharkey. But unfortunately, his story keeps changing on the cops. He would go on to make mistakes in his story, like saying that she would end up leaving barefoot that night, but then also change the story and say that she left with her running shoes on. He would say that she would climb a fence and get into a black car that night after their argument. He would also change the story and say that she left with her phone and then he would say that she left without her phone. He would go on to say that he used the tracking service on the phone to track the black car that she got into until he lost signal and then he lost track of the black car and that's when he got worried and started calling her loved ones to see if they had heard from her. Alexis's friends and loved ones would end up using social media to spread the word of her disappearance and see if they can get any information and actually a lot of 
my friends knew her personally and ended up posting these stories as well. Unfortunately, city workers would go on to find a female body in the side of the road on November 28th, 2020. Part six of the Alexa Sharkey case. Now, when they officially found the body, there was actually no clear signs of how she'd been killed. So they had no idea, but the aftermath of her body being found came out to show a lot of information about the marriage between Tom and Alexa Sharkey. It turns out they were already in the process of starting a divorce. The bank accounts had officially been split. They even had the divorce documents already drawn up. This would actually go on to make it obvious as to why Tom and her weren't spending a lot of time together and why she was traveling a lot without him. One of the friends that Alexis traveled with would tell the cops later on that Alexis let her know that she was scared of Tom and she actually feared for her life because he would send her threatening texts of strangling her or wanting to like hurt her. In January 19th of 2021, the autopsy revealed that the cause of death was strangulation, making this case officially a homicide. Like for the last and final part. Final part of the Alexa Sharkey case. Between her husband's stories constantly changing, the possible affair between her and Sebastian and the divorce papers being drawn up for her and Tom, it's kind of looking over here like Tom did it. And I mean, I don't know about you guys, I'm not saying he did it because he wasn't convicted yet, but if you're telling the truth, it shouldn't be that hard to keep up with your story and it shouldn't be changing that many times. Now, unfortunately, this is still an ongoing investigation and no one has been convicted for this crime yet. Her friend Tanya says that if she would have actually made it out to even go for a walk, that she would have definitely let the group chat know or had one of them pick them up. But no one ever heard from her again after that last message that she sent out at 5 p.m. on Black Friday. So what do you guys think? Who do you think did it? Do you think it could have been the guy she had an affair with, Sebastian? Or could it have been Tom, her husband, that keeps lying and changing his stories? Let me know down below. Don't forget to give this a like. And yeah, let me know what y'all want to hear about. Bye.